in this video we'll look at the, some of the other cells and tissues in the heart which actually controls the heartbeat. And we'll look at first of all the different structures, structures of it as you can see in red there. There are four different parts that we'll look at and their function and, and their functions and importance to controlling our heart contractions. So first of all, some keywords again, uh, you may have heard of this before as well. We consider the cardiac muscles, cardiac meaning the heart. The cardiac muscles are what we call uh, myogenic, which means that uh, the heart can actually con create its own electrical impulses. And we say it is these electrical impulses, electrical excitation waves, that actually allow the chambers of the heart to contract, to push the blood out. And so there are four different parts. We've got the two nodes there and also these different fibers that we'll look at. So in the very beginning, we've got this node here and we call this the sinoatrial node. This sinoatrial node is what we consider as the natural pacemaker because it is the tissues that actually initiate that electrical impulse. It will spread those impulses uh, along these fibers here. So it will transmit that signal across these fibers and as the electrical signal passes through these fibers, they will cause atrial systole, which is the contraction of the atria. So it, it works as the electrical impulses travel along uh, on the walls of the atria. So therefore, as they travel through, they would initiate that contraction. So this is the one that sets the pace. It's the natural pacemaker initiates this whole process. And as the electrical impulse passes through the fibers, and then eventually it will get to this part here, which is called the atrioventricular node, or we might know it as uh, AVN. And the atrioventricular node serves a very, very important function, which is to delay this impulse, to delay the signal, which means that as the, uh, the impulses travel through these fibers to allow the atria to contract, uh, when it reaches the atrioventricular node, it stops the signal temporarily. And it is really important because uh, it actually, by delaying the signal, it's actually allowing the atria to fully contract, to allow the blood in the atria to completely flow into the ventricles. If it doesn't actually delay the signal here, which means, let's say, if this doesn't exist, then as the electric impulse pass through here, the atria contract, the blood goes here, but because of the lack of delay, it will then go through the septum here and across, and it goes to the area of the ventricles here, and that means the ventricles will also contract almost at the same time. So that just simply means that the, some of the blood will be able to enter ventricles, but not completely. So it would be quick, it, as soon as the blood enters the ventricles, it would immediately want to pump back out or even back into the atria. So that just means that there will be actually less blood leaving the heart and more of the blood will actually stay in the atria and that it's not efficient. So the atrioventricular node allows the delay to allow complete blood flow into the ventricles. And after that short delay, the signal will then again be, they will, the atrioventricular node will pass the signal along and along these two branches here. These are two big branches and we call them the bundle of His. And the bundle of His has a very simple function, which is to simply transmit the impulses from the atrioventricular node to the apex, which is the tip of the heart there. And it's worth knowing that as the electrical impulses pass through here, they will not actually stimulate ventricles to contract because the bundle of His is actually wrapped around by an insulating layer. And what that means is as the electrical impulses pass through here, these, these ventricular walls will not actually feel the excitation and they will not contract. And they will allow the excitation to waves to actually go to the apex and then from that point onwards, it will then branch off on either side of the ventricles. And that is really, really important. Imagine if you are trying to get, you, you don't have a lot of toothpaste left in, in your uh, tube of toothpaste. You wouldn't actually just squeeze the top bit near the mouth of the toothpaste to try to get more toothpaste out. You would squeeze it from the bottom up. You'll even roll it up to make sure you get everything out. It's the same concept in terms of heart contraction. As the blood is traveling from the atria into the ventricles, we said that the delay here will allow the blood to completely flow. We also want to make sure that all of the blood in the ventricles can actually exit uh, the heart. So therefore, we will allow, as it travels through here, it allows blood to completely fill the ventricles. And then if we start the stimulation from this bottom bit up, we are allowing the contraction starts there to make sure that it squeezes all the blood from the bottom up and out of the heart. So that's why the bundle of his has an insulating layer there. It transmits the impulses from the AVN to the apex, but 
it doesn't allow the actual stimulation. And from the apex, they would spread uh, into multiple fibers uh, along the sides of the wall. So I'm just only drawing the side, um, the cross section of it, but imagine as a 3D shape, it just literally wraps around the entire wall of the uh, ventricles. And these fibers are what we call the Perkins fibers. Now you might have heard of different pronunciations of it, Perkinji fibers uh, or Perkine fibers or P uh, Perkinj fibers. Regardless of it, the function is the same. The Perkinj fibers will actually spread the impulses along the ventricles, like I mentioned earlier. And as they do that, they are stimulating the ventricular, um, ventricular walls to contract, uh, which is what we call the ventricular systole. So there you have it, that is how the myogenic cardiac muscles actually control its own contractions. We've got the sinoatrial node here, which is uh, the natural pacemaker that initiates the electrical impulses and it spreads the impulse along these mini fibers to uh, allow atria to contract. Then it reaches, the impulses would reach the atrioventricular node, AVN, which delays the signal allowing the atria to fully contract, allowing all of the blood to completely flow into the ventricles. Then the impulses after delay would be released and it goes down the bundle of His, which are the two major branches of fibers here. Uh, and simply put, they transmit the impulses from the AVN into the ape uh, to the apex, which is the bottom point of the heart. Uh, but they do have an insulating layer around it to prevent uh, the ventricles to start the contractions from the, from the top part here until they get to the apex. And at the apex, the bundle of His, the fibers there would branch off into Perkinj fibers, which goes along the sides of the ventricular walls, which spread the uh, impulses along the ventricles to start the ventricular uh, systole, starts the ventricular uh, contractions from the bottom bit up, and then pushing all the blood out of the aorta and out of the pulmonary artery. And this is how the uh, myogenic cardiac muscles control their own contractions. <laughs>